It's back. Bigger. Better. And better. It's Black's History Month, the sequel, a 28-day celebration of black exploitation films. With how good Uptown Saturday Night was, it amazes me that Sidney Poitier only intended for it to be a standalone movie with no sequels. Warner Brothers basically had to talk him into doing another movie. However, his next foray into the world of directing, 1975's Let's Do It Again, would not technically be a sequel, but an entirely different movie with an entirely new plot and characters that just so happened to include many of the same people who worked on Uptown Saturday Night. Hey, we had a good writer for the first film? Let's do it again. Felt like Portier and Bill Cosby had good chemistry? Let's do it again. Thought that Calvin Lockhart played a great gangster? Let's do it again. Honestly, they should have just went ahead and made it a part two if he was going to invite everybody back. But funny enough, originally, Sidney Portier didn't want he and Bill Cosby back as the main characters and instead preferred Red Fox and Richard Pryor, which admittedly sounds excellent. But the studio shot that down because they felt like Pryor and Fox weren't big enough names to market the film with. So Portier and Cosby were back at it. Just like in Uptown Saturday Night, I love that Portier always portrays his characters as working class, middle class type people, and Let's Do It Again is no different. Clyde Williams, played by Portier, and Bill Foster, played by Bill Cosby, work down at some docks or something, but that type of labor isn't bringing in the kind of money that their Mason Lodge needs to survive. It's interesting to me that it's not a church, because in any other movie, it would have been a church. So props to Let's Do It Again for changing that up. Bill Foster is especially in the hot seat because he's the Lodge treasurer. So he hatches a scheme to place bets on a boxing match in New Orleans with two notorious gangsters so that they can walk away with a ton of their money. The two plan to rig the match in their favor. And usually you could kind of guess how someone might pull that off. Maybe they'll drug the opponent. Maybe they'll load their favorite fighter's gloves. Something like that. But what does Clyde and Bill do and Let's Do It Again? Why they hypnotize the weakest fighter, Bootney Farnsworth, played by J.J. Walker of Good Times fame. They hypnotize Bootney to think that he's stronger than his opponent, so that when he knocks him out, they'll walk away with all the money, because they were the only ones who were dumb enough to bet on him. I definitely wasn't expecting that, but seeing as this is a comedy, it's not like it's out of place. To me, Let's Do It Again gets off to a bit of a slow start, whereas Uptown Saturday Night started out fast and slowed down towards the end. If I had a preference, I'd say I like the pacing of Let's Do It Again a little better. Once they get to New Orleans, it really takes off and is held up high by great performances from John Amos, also from Good Times, which was on TV at the same time as this film, and from Calvin Lockhart, who as I mentioned, did great in Uptown Saturday Night as Silky Slim and even better here as Biggie Smalls. All my 90s hip hop fans just went, say what? Yep, this character is where Christopher Wallace, AKA the Notorious B.I.G. got his original name from. The story goes that Calvin Lockhart didn't like the name associated with the type of rapper Big was, so he sued to have the name changed. Now everywhere you look, that's the only story that you'll see, but to me, it doesn't really make sense. Just because you play somebody in a movie, doesn't mean you now own the name of said character. Like Pam Greer played Foxy Brown in a film. That doesn't prevent anybody else from ever using that name. In all likelihood, it was probably Warner Brothers who sued for whatever reason, and Calvin Lockhart somehow ended up with all the blame. I could be wrong, but it just makes more sense to me. I mean, shoot, Julius Harris, who also stars in this movie and is a exploitation veteran, was nicknamed Big Papa in the movie Hell Up in Harlem. Can he sue too? Anyway, the fight goes exactly how Clyde and Bill wanted it to go, and they make off with tons of the gangsters' money that they use to expand their lodge and improve their community. Once again, bucking the trend of what usually happens with money in these movies. That's only the start of the movie though, and everything that happens afterwards, you just have to see for yourself. You're in for a hell of a ride though, and all I'll say is, the house always wins. Let's Do It Again is everything you liked about Uptown Saturday Night and then some. Portier and Cosby perfected their fish out of water chemistry and even with some contrasting acting styles, they still managed to fit together and play comedy off each other. This movie even makes better use of the women this time around, since that was something that Uptown was criticized for. 
they come across more as sidekicks this time around instead of just being seen once and then disappearing for the rest of the film. With a star-studded cast and an entertaining premise, you can't go wrong with Let's Do It Again, which is probably why after this film, the duo once again said, let's do it again.